Today we're going to be taking a look at the AlexTel terminal, which I have here on my left. On my right here is a PC that's running TerraTerm, and uh, in the middle there you see a Viking DLE 200B, and on the PC is a modem. Now, the Viking DLE 200B is actually a phone line simulator. I don't actually have a phone but I want to connect them up together and in this particular case my AlexTel terminal does not have a serial port. So basically what I have to do is simulate a service um, and the Bell uh, AlexTel terminal connecting to a host computer. So on the PC I have TerraTerm set up with various settings uh, let's just go through that and take a look to see how that is set up. So what we have here is we have TerraTerm. Uh, we have it set up for COM7, which is the modem that is connected to this PC. I'm going to go into the serial port settings. And if I take a look at this, it is set up for COM7. The speed is 9600 baud. It is uh, 8 data bits, no parity one stop bit, the flow control is set for RTS CTS and the transmit delay is 5 milliseconds per character. Now the transmit delay is an important setting because the AlexTel terminal can't actually keep up with the flow coming in. So that is a setting I actually have to play with a little bit depending on the size of the file. So I'm, I set it to 5 5 has been what I've been able to use with the largest file. Uh, it makes things a little bit slower, but uh, it, it allows the file to pass through with no issues. So uh, when we connect the AlexTel through the Viking box, uh, it's going to dial up this PC. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in ATA at uh, this window and it will answer the AlexTel terminal calling it. Now I have a number of files. These are actually test files and I'm going to be basically dragging and dropping into this window. Um, what this does is it, uh, if I do that, it brings up a dialog box and what I have to do is I have to set this to binary because it actually needs uh, the actual bytecode for uh, NAPLEPS and, and Teladon 709, which is the uh, protocol for Teladon, those need to be binary because it's basically all uh, code by, uh, by data bits. So I have to make sure that I set that. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing three different, uh, four different files. Uh, I'm going to do a small Teladon line demo, which will be very quick. I'm going to be doing a NAPLEPS session, which is going to be a little bit more involved. Before I get into that, I guess Teladon is something that was created in, in Canada for basically the extension to Videotex. So Videotex was done by countries like France with Minitel, which allowed uh, text and uh, some graphics over a phone line for service. Uh, it provided various services. Bell also had a number of different services. Uh, one of the famous ones is chat. Took up a lot of time, took up a lot of uh, cost, and people were getting outrageous bills. Teladon 709 then uh, morphed into uh, NAPLIPS. And so NAPLIPS is an acronym. It's the North American presentation level protocol syntax. And basically what that does is it defines the byte codes or the bits that are sent to the terminal or whatever device it is that will generate the output. Could be a TV back then, whatever it is. So these files are basically different uh, types of files. Now I actually also have a Minitel file that I found on the web and uh, the AlexTel terminal, you will see soon, uh, actually does uh, Minitel, it does Teladon, and it does NAPLIPS. And NAPLIPS was the sort of the evolution of all of these types of services. But 
And then the internet came and the World Wide Web came and, and basically it was a technology that didn't go uh, very far after that. So those are the things we're going to do. Let's go back to the Alextel terminal and we will uh, take a look at how that runs. Okay, so what we have here is the Alextel terminal now. Uh, you can see that when you first turn it on, it actually tells you, uh, or actually shows you a phone directory. Um, you can see on the left-hand side that there is a telephone handset. This could actually be used as a normal telephone. I believe it had two lines, but it also had the Bell Alex service. And so it could be used for data. It could be used for uh, regular phone calls. Now, in this particular case, you can see in the telephone directory, I have local. It is a phone number of one. For the Viking box, I need some sort of a phone number. So it, even a one is good enough. Uh, it basically initiates the call to the PC, which I have here on my right. And uh, it will go ahead and uh, dial that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and select one and hit uh, send. Now it is basically trying to call the PC. On the PC I'm typing ATA. Okay, and there we have a session that's set up. Um, you will see a small cursor. The small cursor basically means that it is in some sort of terminal mode and it's in 80 columns. Now, I know a lot of people have used uh, Alextel terminals as VT100 terminals after the servers had gone away. There was basically not a whole lot more you could do other than use this as a terminal and people would call up, you know, whatever dial-up services they had because these had a modem built in. Now, this particular terminal will do 9600 baud. I saw that uh, uh, when I read up on Wikipedia, it said that the Alextel services was 1200 baud, so that would be really slow. But uh, this does 9600 baud, and um, that's essentially how it communicates. This, this particular terminal does not have a serial port, so I can't connect it direct to the PC. I, I would assume I could do that if I'd had a serial port. This one only has a modem, so we have to use that uh, Viking box. So one of the things we need to do is we need to get into NAPLIPS mode. Okay, so right now it's set up as a VT100. There is a, sp a special sequence of keys that you have to press to get into NAPLIPS mode, and that is uh, Control-Shift-N. Now, if you saw, there was a bit of a flash. Right now, it's actually in NAPLIPS mode. You don't see a cursor anymore. Uh, it is actually 40 columns now. And uh, because NAPLIPS was a 40 column by 25 uh, protocol. So we have it in NAPLIPS mode. Now, one thing I need to do, and I'm not sure why this happens, uh, I will get a parity error if I don't specifically set the parity to none. I've actually tried even, which is the, the normal uh, parity setting for the Teledon service, but uh, that didn't work, so I have to go and do a Control shift w And you can see that it goes from even to odd to none to even to odd. I have to set it specifically to none. Okay, so we're basically all set up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, show you a very quick Teledon file. So I've just dragged one of the files. I have to again set it to binary. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And basically you can see it drawing out the lines. And it will show you uh, the text image one overlaid. Now, Alextel is a black and white system, so unfortunately you don't see the colors. Uh, I think this is like two or three different colors, but this will show you shades of gray. 
So unfortunately, we don't have the uh, facility to show color. There's no uh, external monitor you can connect up to this. So that is basically what the service provided back then. Now you can see here basically on the PC side that these are the codes that it sent for that Teledon 709 file. And you can see the, you know, at signs and so on. These, while they look like characters, it's actually the binary representation of those characters that is the code for Teledon and for Naplips. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of looking into Minitel and video text and how that works, but I would imagine it's something the same because I actually have to set binary for those as well. So that's just a quick view on uh, what the code actually looks like. And, and again, you can see that code because I said echo on. Okay, so we're back at the LXTEL terminal. Now, there is a second mode on this that we can get into. Uh, we're gonna sh look at Minitel shortly, but in this mode, uh, this is a Teledon 709 file, and Teledon 709 is basically the version of the Teledon protocol that was used. Uh, there was 699, which was earlier, 709 was a later one. That then developed with a bunch of different uh, uh, telecom companies, including Bell Canada, AT&T, and so on, into the NAPLIPS protocol. So that basically is, is how that evolved. Now I'm going to show another NAPLIPS file and I'm going to take a file, I'm going to drag it, I'm going to drop it, and I'm going to say OK. And basically now this is a NAPLIPS file. And you can see that uh, it also has vector graphics, it's drawing, this is a, some sort of a beer page. Text has actually had already been sent, but this is still in the process of actually drawing that image. So this does take a bit of time, uh, even though the data has been sent. So uh, because the, uh, you know, this was done through dial-up through a phone line back then, uh, and Alex Tel, uh, or the Alex service was specifically 1200 baud from what I've read, you can see that this will take a lot of time. This is normally not what you would see with Alex, the Alex service, because you would normally see small pieces, uh, you know, less uh, intense type uh, images. But uh, what I'm going to do at the end of this is I'm going to show you a very large NAPLIPS file. Uh, but I'm going to speed that up because it literally takes like seven or eight minutes to, to, uh, to show. But uh, it's an interesting demo because it actually does screen wipes and so on. So we'll get into that in a second. But basically this is a NAPLIPS file. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch into video text mode. Okay, so this, the Alextel, um, I would imagine that it actually would do this automatically when you used it as a service. But uh, there, there's the key sequences that I was able to find that actually switches the modes manually. So we had done Control Shift N for NAPLIPS. We're going to do Control Shift V for video text. Now that should be in uh, video text mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and send a file. And this is specifically a Minitel file. I found it on a website. I'll actually put a link into uh, in the description, but uh, this is a specific Minitel file. Now this, you can see, is uh, sort of pixel graphics. It's not uh, a vector-based uh, system like NAPLIPS but it still gets the point across of uh, the graphics within the Minitel system. Now, I, again, I haven't looked at a whole lot to Minitel. I don't know all of the capabilities, but I do know that it has a specific Minitel or video text setup, and you can get into that through a specific key sequence. And uh, otherwise, uh, it's just interesting that this could do it, uh, even though the Alex service was uh, based on NAPLIPS. 
So I'm gonna go back to Naplips mode and I should be able to do that by just hitting Control, Shift, N. Okay, you can see that the screen clears and I'm going to put in a larger file. Now, this is gonna take a bit of time. I'm going to speed this thing up, but this is a, a very large file and you can see that on the PC next to me, the data is streaming, but there's not a whole lot on the screen quite yet. And you'll see that it actually takes a second before it starts to draw things. So I'm gonna uh, let you see this demo and uh, we'll talk in the end. Okay, so I think the demo is done. Uh, unfortunately, the AlexTel terminal doesn't have a sort of a thinking or, or whatever icon telling you that it's actually spending cycles to draw the or render the screen. So uh, I think it's done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send it a, a small file, again, the Teladon line file. And uh, if it actually sends it and renders it, then that means that it was done. But uh, before I do that, first of all, this file actually came from a Japanese website that had a Naplips uh, browser add-on from some time back. It's, I, I'd have to look to see what browsers uh, it actually supported, but it would have been stuff back in the uh, 80s or 90s. So it's not something that you can see uh, currently, but the files are actually on the website. So I'll put a link to, uh, in the description to that website. This thing actually took six and a half minutes to send the data to the AlexTel, and it took uh, an additional three and a half minutes after that to actually render. So in total, it took about 10 minutes to render that image. So, uh, you know, obviously for a service that wants to be quick, you're not gonna have images like this, but this is more or less a demonstration of what uh, Naplips can do and you can see the very fine detail. This is all, again, vector-based. It's not uh, specific pixels. Uh, in this case, there may be some pixels because of the very fine detail, but it is a vector-based uh, system. So I'm gonna go ahead and send that file, and yeah, it was done. So you can see uh, it just shows you the next file, and as a service, you know, you would see a file, you would type in a menu item, and then it would show you the next file and it would basically do that as a service. Uh, in my particular case, I actually seen this uh, in uh, grade six 
and uh, or it was a Teledon demo in grade six where they wheeled in the cart with the computer on it and uh, that was essentially the first computer I had seen so that's why it was sort of important to me to do some uh, stuff with Teledon and uh, later on Naplebs and uh, that is basically the demonstration so uh, I hope you enjoyed it uh, sorry if this was a bit long but uh, it's interesting to see what the AlexTel terminal can do and uh, the different protocols that it supports. So thank you uh, for watching. And uh, if you have actually used uh, any sort of Teledon or Alex service or anything like that, please leave a comment. I'd be happy to hear about all of the different uh, experiences with this type of technology. Thanks again for watching. Take care.